So in this video, we're going to talk about projectiles that are being um, launched at an angle. So in this little circus cannon, we're going to launch a cannonball. Woo! Amazing. Now, if we turn the velocity vector on, you'll notice that the direction of the velocity vector uh, is always tangent to the path. So the velocity vector is always tangent to the path. Um, and then if we turn the acceleration vector on, you will notice here, I'll slow this down, you'll notice that the velocity vector is tangent to the path, but the acceleration vector in yellow is always pointing down. That's because the acceleration comes from the acceleration due to gravity, and gravity always pulls down. So the acceleration is always down. Okay, good. So no matter where you're at in the path, the acceleration vector is down. Great. Now let's take a look at the components of the velocity vector. So we've already talked about how um, projectile motion has an x, velocity that is constant, and then a y velocity that changes, but this is going to let us visualize it. Okay, so notice that the x component, or the forward component of velocity doesn't change, but the upward component decreases until it's zero, and then it increases in the opposite direction. So first it slows down, it decreases, then it's zero, then it speeds up in the opposite direction. Okay, this is of course because there is an acceleration in the vertical direction, so the vertical velocity is changing. Let's take some notes to sort of summarize all of this. Let's start by talking about the acceleration vector um, for a projectile when it's going through its path. So let's practice drawing a projectile with an initial velocity v0 at some angle, theta. And then the trajectory is going to look like a parabola, kind of just like that. Draw a little horizontal line. And then we're going to draw the ball at these locations. So in the middle, at the top, and then at the bottom. The acceleration vector always points down. And the acceleration vector is, we can call it g, because the acceleration due to gravity is called little g. Okay, so no matter where you are at, the acceleration vector is the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so g is the acceleration, and it always points down. It's so easy to conceptualize that. Well, let's take a look at what the velocity vector would look like during this trajectory. All right, now let's redraw that exact same picture. Got our initial velocity, v naught, some angle theta, and again, we're gonna draw this even bigger. How good are you at drawing parabolas? Okay, so we drew the projectile, and I'm gonna draw it in the middle, at the top, back down at the middle, and then right before it hits the ground. Now I'm going to draw the x and the y components of this initial velocity. The x component we can draw here, and we could call that vx0, but remember vx0, the initial x velocity, um, it isn't going to change. So you can just say that it's vx, and it's the same at every point in the projectile's path. Again, this is because there's no acceleration to the right or the left, because gravity doesn't pull to the right. It pulls down. Okay, so the x velocity is constant throughout the projectile's path. But the vertical component of velocity, it changes. The vertical component, which we'll say is vy0 at the beginning, first is going to get smaller. Till eventually, here at the top, it would be equal to zero because gravity has slowed that vertical velocity down to zero. Then it's going to start to point down until eventually it gets to the same height that it was. And what's interesting here uh, is that we know, like if we were to just throw this ball up and let it come back down to our hand, that whatever this initial upward velocity given to the projectile is, that is going to be the same velocity when it comes to the same height, only in the opposite direction. In fact, the velocity vectors at any equal heights will have equal magnitude opposite directions. That's sometimes a useful symmetry to work with. So now let's think about the overall velocity, or like the total velocity. The total velocity we always call v, um, and it's going to be like the hypotenuse of this right triangle or the diagonal of a parallelogram, um, and it's going to get smaller than at the top. It's not zero, it just is the x velocity, um, and then as it goes down, it's going to begin to point 
um, at a different angle and in a larger direction. Okay, now remember to find the magnitude, you would always do the Vx component squared plus the Vy component squared, and to get the angle at any time, you would do the tangent inverse of Vy over Vx. All right, let's do some problems. You kick a soccer ball, giving it a velocity of 22 meters a second at an angle of 63 degrees above the horizontal. What is the maximum height that the ball reaches? What is the total time that the ball is in the air for, and how far forward does the ball travel? Okay, so let's draw this picture. Got our initial velocity, we'll call that V0, at an angle theta. Looks like it's about 63 degrees. Um, <clears throat> and right away I'm going to go ahead and draw this little path. And I know that there's going to be an x component of velocity, which we can call uh, vx0 if you want, or again, it doesn't change, so we can call it vx. And then a y component of velocity, there we go, which we're going to call the y0. Uh, and we're going to find those by using sine and cosine. So v0 is this 22 meters a second, and theta is 63 degrees. So if I want to find uh, Vx, Vx will be V naught cosine theta and Vy is, sorry, Vy naught is going to be V naught times sine theta. Okay, so for Vx, that's going to be 22 meters a second times cosine of 63 degrees for Vy, 22 meters a second times sine, 63 degrees, and 22 cosine 65 is 9 point, sorry, I can't read my own writing, 22 times cosine of 63 is 9.98, so we'll call that 10. And 22 sine of 63 is going to give you 19.6 meters per second. Okay, so here is one of the benefits of using uh, vector notation. I can save that initial velocity in an ij vector. I can say 10i plus 19.6j, and that is really easy me to think about. So I'm going to write that down, store that information, and then get rid of all this. Okay, now let's start working on the problem. What is the maximum height that the ball reaches? Okay, well maybe I should draw the ground. Um, and when you think about this problem, you are going to start at an initial height of zero, and then at the maximum height, you're going to have some y that we want to find. So I've got y equals question mark, y not equals zero. And of course I know that the initial velocity in the y direction is 19.6 meters a second. And I know the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. And I need to somehow figure out why. Hmm. What a stumper. If only I knew like what the, the velocity was at the maximum height. Well, I mean, I guess I do know that it's velocity is going to be whatever the x velocity is, and like the velocity equals vx, and then the y component of velocity is just zero. Oh, okay, yeah, so that's how we're going to solve the problem. We'll say the final velocity at the maximum height in the y direction is zero, just like a free fall problem. So if I want to figure out what y is, then I notice here I have everything but time, so I'll use the ain't got no time equation. Instead of delta y, I'm going to write this as y minus y naught. Okay, and then let's get rid of things that are zero. So the final velocity is zero, and the initial position um, is zero. Okay, so when we get rid of those two things, we're going to get zero equals negative 2g times y plus vy naught squared. So 2gy equals vy naught squared. And I want to solve for y, so all I do is I divide both sides by 2g uh, to get y by itself. Okay, so the y initial velocity is 19.6, 19.6 meters a second squared over 2 times 9.8 meters a second squared. Um, and that's 
going to give me, ironically, 19.6 squared divided by 19.6, which is 19.6 meters. Because that's the maximum height that it reaches. Okay, uh, now let's get rid of some of this work and talk about what we would do to find the total time. Okay, now um, there are a lot of different ways that you can solve uh, to find the total time, but I think certainly one of the simplest would be for us to write a graphable equation for the height. So the height is an accelerated motion, and it's going to obey this equation. So what we can do is we can kind of write a graphable, graphable position for the height and use that to figure out how much time the object is in the air for. So uh, negative 1 half g, that's negative 4.9, that's half of 9.8 t squared, um, plus vy naught times t, so that's 19.6 times t, and the initial height is 0, so we don't have to add anything. Okay, so if I get out my graphing calculator and I go to y equals... I can put this equation in, negative 4.9x instead of t squared plus 19.6x plus nothing. So I graph that. And remember, this is giving me a graph of the height versus time. Um, and if I want, I can get a better window. So we could probably go to zoom 6 for standard or zoom 0 for zoom fit. That might be too wild. <laughs> That's too wild. Well, let's go to the window. Um, the minimum shouldn't be negative 600. That's insane. Let's just let's just maybe say like I don't know negative negative five, and the max 19.6. That is the maximum um, height that was reached. So let's say like 25. Oh, that's so much better. Okay, so remember this is uh, not a graph of the path. This is a graph of the height versus time. And so what I can do is I can figure out when the ball has returned to a position of zero, which would be this second zero right here. So all I have to do to find that is go to second calc, uh, zero, and then I'm going to go over to the left bound, right bound, guess, and boom, it tells me x equals four. Okay, so I can say that t, I can graph that if I want, but t equals four seconds is what it takes for the ball to return to a height of zero. Now I could have actually gotten that answer by saying that the height y equals zero and then solving this equation because first I would divide out t and that would give me negative 4.9 uh, times t equals 19.6, and then when you divide 19.6 by 4.9, that actually gives you 4 seconds. Okay, so that's another way you could do it. So anyway, it's in the air for 4 seconds. Uh, and I also can say that since this is a, a symmetrical problem, it starts at a height of 0 and goes back to a height of 0, that I would know at the maximum height this happened at 2 seconds. Sometimes that's useful. Okay, let's do part C. How far forward does the ball travel? So this is where we're going to use the x velocity. And remember, we found that the x velocity was 10 meters per second. And that was the initial x velocity. And that will be the x velocity at every point in the projectile's path. And because that x velocity is constant, we can use our constant velocity equation. And it's really easy. I just say the initial position is 0 position I want to find is x, and so I get rid of the initial position and use my x velocity, 10 meters a second, and that time that I calculated to get to the position I'm looking for, 4 seconds. So 10 times 4 is 40 meters. Sometimes we call this the range of the projectile. It went 40 meters down range. Okay, good. So now let's try the exact same problem only this time, you're kicking the soccer ball off the roof of a 10 meter tall building. So I'll draw that 10 meter tall building. Now you give the ball an initial velocity at an angle. And remember, uh, we can use the exact same 
initial velocity, nothing would be different about our initial velocity. So 10i plus 19.6j meters per second. Um, and you're going to notice that it goes off the edge of the ball and then lands somewhere down at the bottom. Part A asks, how much time is the ball in the air for? Well, just like before, what we're going to do is we're going to try and use this equation. y equals negative 1 half gt squared plus vy naught times t plus y naught. Uh, when we used this equation before, y naught was 0. But now, we've elevated it to a height of 10. So we would say y naught equals 10. And we're interested in when y equals 0 at the ground, finding that time that it takes to get there. So we can write a graphable equation with uh, 10 as our initial position, and then figure out when does it reach 0 and give us a time, just like what we did before. So to do that, you would say negative 1 half g, that's negative 4.9 t squared, plus, remember your y velocity is 19.6 t, and now instead of plus 0, it's plus 10. So you get out your handy dandy graphing calculator, and now you go to y equals, and we're going to put this exact same equation that we used before, only this time we need to add an initial position of 10, not 0. So we graph it. Ooh, we might need to change our window a little bit so that the max is a little higher, let's say 30. That's fine. Um, okay, great. So what we're looking for is this zero here. And remember, this graph is showing us um, not the actual path of the projectile, but the change in height. So it's y versus t, time. So I'm going to look for this zero where I'm going to get the time when it's at a height of zero. So second calc, zero. And I go to the left, then to the right. Guess it back now, y'all. Okay, and now I have 4.45, 4.4578, so we'll say 4.46 seconds. So t equals 4.46, that looks awful, 4.46 seconds. Okay, great. Now, if we try to set this equation equal to 0, and solve for it, you totally can solve for the time. You would just have to use the quadratic equation to do that. You are always more than welcome to use the quadratic equation. But I find it easier to just graph and then find t when the height is 0, just like what we did. OK, so that's part A. Uh, part B, how far from the base of the building does the ball land? Well, now that I know how much time it takes to get to um, that ground again, now I can say the initial x position is 0. And I'm looking for the final x position at time uh, t equals 4.46 seconds. Thankfully, in the x direction, there's constant velocity. So let's get rid of all that work uh, and focus on the x part. So we know the x velocity is 10 meters per second, and it's constant. It doesn't change. So I can use my constant velocity equation. And now I know um, that the initial position is 0, so I get rid of that. And the time is 4.46 seconds, and my velocity is 10. So 10 times 4.46 is 44.6 meters. So we've gone a little bit farther since we're kicking the soccer ball off of the, a roof. OK, we're doing great. Now let's answer this question, part C. How fast is the ball going just before it hits the ground? OK, well, let's do the magnitude and direction of this problem. Um, this is where I think vector notation is really helpful for us. Uh, because remember, our vx velocity is constant. It doesn't change. And our y velocity, um, it does change. In fact, it's going to change with the acceleration due to gravity in this exact equation, vy naught. So what I'll do is I'll write my velocity equation as a vector, where I have vx, which is 10. And now 
I'm not using my initial velocity um, for my J comp component. I'm using uh, this whole thing. So I'm going to do negative G 9.8 T plus 19.6 times J. And now I have a velocity equation in unit vector notation that I can just plug in a time and figure out what my x and y coordinate are. So when I plug in 4.46 seconds, the x component doesn't change, so that's still 10. But now I'm going to get negative 9.8 times t plus 19.6. So negative 9.8 times 4.46. Uh, plus that initial of 19.6. Okay, and that gives me negative 24.1. So negative, you know, we could do this. Instead of a plus, minus negative 22.1. That's what we got, right? 24.1. Whew, glad I checked. Negative 24.1 J. Okay, so that's the... That's the velocity um, in the x and the and the y, the y component, um, uh, before the ball hits the ground. But notice it says how fast. What that means is it's wanting you to find the magnitude of the velocity at that point, right? Because you would have some y component um, of 24.1 and an x component of 10 and the actual vector is going to be the the resultant of those two components. So we need to use the Pythagorean theorem and we're going to do 10 meters per second squared plus negative 24.1 meters per second squared and that is going to give me 26.09 so we'll say 26 point, 26 point 1 meters per second. Now if I was asked to find the angle um, which the angle would be this right here because it's always in reference to the positive x then I would say tangent inverse again we, we found how fast it's 26.1 now we're just going to go ahead and real quick find the angle just for kicks uh, you would do the y component negative 24.1 over the x component 10 meters a second and that would give you um, an angle tan inverse negative 24.1 divided by 10 of negative 67.46 so let's say negative 67.5 degrees which that angle makes sense because it would be down and to the right in like the fourth quadrant if we were to make this into quadrants okay great so this is everything that you need to know about projectile motion problems when uh, the projectile is launched at an angle it can be launched from the ground or it can be launched from a roof. Anyway, you're super smart and this video is done.